Now, particularly in contemporary culture, the process of developing an identity would seem to be ultimately personal and private. Who, after all, could possibly experience or understand my particular identity, my particular sense of self, except me? Um, for Jews or for anarchists inspired by the collectivist communitarian traditions of Bakunin, Kropotkin, Malatesta, Landauer, Murray Bookchin, Claims about the communal and collective structuring of identity should hardly be surprising. But in the context of prevailing liberal individualism of the United States, to argue that individual identity is a social product, let alone that it's socially constructed, is to grate against dominant belief systems. So I want to tell you some stories. First, it took me a very long time myself to recognize the interconnections among and within the, in, these important aspects of my own identity. Uh, in 1979, which is an extraordinarily long time ago at this point, I gave a talk in a colloquium series uh, at Smith entitled Thinking About Women. I said then that I had originally seen my research interests in anarchism and the struggles of people to imagine and then to create egalitarian, non-authoritarian societies as completely separate from my personal and political commitments to feminism. For years, it had been a source of some confusion and pain to me that my feminist concerns seemed to be so separate from my scholarly and political ones, despite my feminist belief that it was important to mesh them. It might seem peculiar that I didn't make the connection, one that seems now so patently obvious, but I didn't. It took a conversation in the kitchen of an old friend for me to have a revelation. The concerns I was acting on in both arenas were the same, stimulated by the same issues. I began to see how my understanding of and concern with anarchism could be enhanced by trying to see the practice of much of the feminist movement as developing precisely the kinds of approaches that anarchist change entails. I began to see anarchism as providing an important framework within which to understand feminism, and feminism as an essential component of anarchism. Um, and it didn't, it wasn't there right away. It didn't, it didn't come naturally somehow. Uh, but there were other aspects of myself that seemed untouched by that move toward integration. For years, although I had been very active in the Jewish community and in the Jewish feminist movement, trying to get Jews and Jewish practices to change to accommodate feminism, there was still a sense in which my Jewish and my feminist worlds didn't come together. My Jewish community was centered in New York, and although my friends there knew me as a feminist, they did not know about or share the totality of feminists, let alone lesbian commitments I shared with friends in Northampton, where I lived. And although my friends in Northampton knew I was a Jew, when it came time for me to celebrate holidays, such as the ones Donna was referring to, I went to New York. The two worlds were separate, and I rarely even tried to pull them together. In fact, I often felt that I had to keep them separate, that the only way to hold on to my sense of who I was was not to present all of it to either group, for fear that somehow I would be seen as separating myself off from it. Uh, or as the other way of thinking about that, that for fear that each group would reject me if they knew who I really was. Jewish community because of homophobia, and the feminist lesbian community because I was too Jewish. My identity as a political scientist seemed, needless to say, completely disengaged from any of this. I did a good deal of speaking within the Jewish community, but I did so for the most part simply as a Jewish feminist. I almost never thought it worth mentioning to my academic colleagues, since it didn't seem to have anything to do with either urban politics or Spanish anarchism, which were the things that I was either teaching or researching about. Now, over time, that separation began to break down. Um, but even though I didn't necessarily feel that I was a completely different person in each of these contexts, the pieces still didn't seem to fit together in any coherent way. And then a number of things happened to change my thinking somewhat more dramatically. 
I mentioned a minute ago that I feared revealing to my Jewish community that I was a lesbian. Uh, indeed, despite the fact that uh, the talk on which this was based was about wholeness, I did not feel comfortable revealing, revealing it in that context either. I never mentioned the word uh, at Smith 25 years ago when I was talking about wholeness. But at a certain point, it became virtually impossible for me to hide such an important dimension of my life. And I told a friend from the Jewish community who responded, more people know than you think. <laughs> that moment began my process of coming out in the Jewish communities in which I was a part. And I realized, it as, as I put it to myself then, that I had been feeling as though I was walking around uh, the world with a big garbage bag on my back fearful of what would happen if folks knew what was in it. And I discovered that it had been clear plastic all along. That's really what it felt like. That was the only way I could describe it. Um, meanwhile, while I was in Spain uh, researching the anarchist movement in the Civil War era, I finally let myself feel what this work meant to me. As I wrote in a journal at the time, it's not just an academic exercise. It was real life experience for the people I've interviewed, and the consequences and ramifications of those experiences are daily issues, both for my friends here and for me. It was, an, again, an acknowledgement on my part of what now seems so obvious, that my work on anarchism is not simply what I do. It's a large part of what I believe and of who I am. But within an academic context, that's Acknowledging that somehow isn't done, is it? Um, anyway, shortly after I returned from that trip to Spain in the spring of 1982, I was invited to a conference of an organization called New Jewish Agenda that was uh, attempting to articulate a progressive left politics within the Jewish community and to provide a Jewish presence within the left political community. I was invited to go there as a political scientist. Uh, and it was quite a remarkable experience. There I was, talking about my visions for the future, which I think was the topic for this little conference, which drew on an analysis I had recently done of the effects of the Reagan budget cuts on women and people of color, and another paper I had written on alternatives to traditional nuclear families. Both of these had been much influenced by my experiences in the women's movement, and by conversations with feminist friends, Jewish and otherwise. And all of it was deeply informed by my incorporation of anarchist images of the way society should be, 